I'm Dr. Mariana Gandolfo, Associated Professor at the Department of Oral Medicine of the School of Dentistry at the University of Buenos Aires. Today, we are pleased to present a case report that we had published at the International Journal of Science and Research together with Dr. Scola, the Consulting Professor Silvia Aguas, and the Head Professor Isabel Adler. The case presented is entitled Oral Lichen Planus in a Teenager with Cardiofacucutaneous Syndrome. Cardiofacucutaneous Syndrome is a genetically heterogeneous clinical entity that is inherited in a dominant autosomal manner. It belongs to a group of syndromes known as rosopathies, genetic syndromes caused by germline mutation in genes that encode components or regulators of the RAS mitogen activated protein kinase pathway. Prevalence of cardiofacucutaneous syndrome is low. It affects multiple organs and systems and is characterized by the presence of craniofacial and cutaneous abnormalities. Clinical manifestations include distinctive facial dysmorphia, cardiac defects, and cutaneous abnormalities. We here and present a case of cardiofacic tenuous syndrome in an adolescent patient presenting lichen planus in the oral mucosa. The aim of the present work was to highlight the general typical features of cardiofacic tenuous syndrome and to describe what is to our knowledge the first case of oral lichen planus in a patient with this syndrome reported in the literature to date. A 12-year-old female patient presented for consultation at the Oral Medicine Department of the School of Dentistry at the University of Buenos Aires with a history of cardiofacucutaneous syndrome and reporting the presence of lesions in her oral mucosa. Diagnosis of cardiofacucutaneous syndrome was established based on the typical clinical features of the syndrome and genetic tests conducted by the Genetic Service of the Garraham Hospital at the City of Buenos Aires, Argentina. Physical examination revealed dysmorphic facial features, sparse, dry, brittle hair, scant eyebrows, tall forehead, bitemporal constriction, hyperthelorism, and low-set ears. White patches and fissures were observed at both commissures of the lips. Here we can see rough, dry skin, kurtosis pilaris on the outer surface of her tags and plantar kurtosis on areas subjected to pressure. Examination of the oral cavity revealed the presence of red atrophic erythematous patches alternating with white plaques in the attached and unattached gingiva of both jaws. Marked tooth crowding were also observed. Here we can observe the presence of a cratotic white plague and a barucus area in the middle third of the dorsal aspect of the tongue. In addition, white plaques and barucus lesions in the anterior third of the buccal mucosa were observed. Based on the oral lesions, presumptive diagnosis of keratotic lichen planus was established. In order to reach definitive diagnosis, a biopsy of the buccal mucosa was taken and the following diagnostic methods were indicated histopathological studies and direct immunofluorescence. Studies results were consistent with oral lichen planus. Given the presence of lesions at both commissures of the lips and on the dorsal surface of the tongue associated with candid infections, said lesions were subbed and sent for mycological and bacteriological examination. Identification of the isolated species and antibacterial and antifungal susceptibility tests in order to rule out superagid infection and to orient treatment. 
the isolated microorganism was Candida albicans. In relation to diagnostic test results, treatment with antifungal drug against Candida infection and with local corticoid to treat our lichen was established. From here, you can see in the following photographic sequence how to describe lesions improved with the treatment. In the picture after the treatment, we can see that the red spots disappeared. A reduction of red spots was observed, as well as an improvement of verrucous areas in tongue lesions after treatment. Finally, in these images after treatment, you can see the improvement of gingival lesions with the reduction or remission of the erythematous and atrophic patches and verrucous areas. Within the ectodermal anomalies, follicular hyperkeratosis in the arms, legs and face are the most frequent cutaneous abnormalities in people with cardiophagic cutaneous syndrome. However, although both tissues derive from the same embryonic layer, no oral mucosa anomalies have been reported to date. Oral lichen planus is a chronic inflammatory disease of immune nature and of a known etiology, usually presenting in middle age and that can affect the skin, oral and genital mucosa, scalp and nails. It has diverse clinical presentation the most frequent being the variant observed in our patient, hyperkeratotic lichen. The prevalence of cutaneous lichen planus in the adult population worldwide range from 0.2% to 1%, whereas oral lichen planus is more frequent and has been reported to affect 1% to 4% of the population. Overall, it affects women more often than men, and most cases develop between the age of 30 and 60 years. In these regards, our patient was female, and lichen planus occur in the oral mucosa, both frequent observations and both in line with studies published in the literature. However, in contrast with reported findings that oral lichen planus is rare in children, with 5 to 10 percent of cases occurring in this age group, the patient reported here was only 12 years old. Although cardiophagic cutaneous syndrome is an extremely rare genetic disorder, it must be suspected in individuals presenting the phenotypical feature described above. Craniofacial and ectodermal manifestation of this syndrome are distinct and play an important role in the diagnosis of this entity. Nevertheless, there is no scientific evidence to date of the presence of lesions in the oral mucosa associated with cardiophagic cutaneous syndrome. In this regard, it would be important to perform through inspection of the oral mucosa of cardiophagic cutaneous syndrome patients to record the presence or absence of stomatological lesions in order to determine whether these lesions are another manifestation of cardiophagic cutaneous syndrome. In addition, it is important to point out that oral lichen planus undergoes malignant transformation in 1 to 2 percent of cases, so that early diagnosis is of great clinical significance in terms of prognosis and patient follow-up. The present study is the first to report the presence of oral lichen planus in a patient with cardiophagic cutaneous syndrome. This finding should be taken into account when evaluating and diagnosing cardiophagic cutaneous syndrome with the aim to establish whether it's an occasional manifestation or whether it's associated with the syndrome. We sincerely appreciate your attention.